Hello, Gary Simon here of designcourse.com. Today is February 13th, and we're going to focus on creating a protein product display in Blender and Photoshop. So this is going to be a two-part video tutorial. Today, we're just going to focus on the modeling aspect in Blender, and then tomorrow, we're going to create the label in Photoshop and get it all ready and working in Blender. All right, so if you haven't yet, check out designcourse.com and subscribe here on YouTube. All right, let's get started. All right, so a quick rundown if you've never used Blender before. To select objects, you just right-click them. You know, it's not left. And then hold Shift if you want to select multiple. Uh, if you want to rotate around the 3D view, you just use your middle mouse button. To zoom up, you use your scroll wheel. And then to pan, you just hold Shift and use your middle mouse button. Pretty easy. So I'm going to file new and just reload startup file so we're all looking at the same thing and so by default we just want to get rid of this cube so hit the delete key and select delete and then we're going to go to shift a which really is just a shortcut for add so shift a mesh and cylinder so obviously this the the shape of our uh, protein container is going to be a uh, cylinder very simple so uh, what we have to do here is basically to get into right now we're in object mode that's a default mode that's where you select move object scale etc um to if we wanted to actually edit this thing we have to go to edit mode so you can on here click on edit and you can switch back and forth by just hitting tab between those two modes all right so real quick you have uh three different modes or ways to interact with objects that's the vertex that's the edge and the face and so each one allows you to kind of manipulate whatever you want to so I uh, what I'm gonna do real quickly is just turn on smooth shading make sure everything's selected and to do that you hit a and that will select all or select none so make sure it's all selected and highlighted and for shading we're gonna choose smooth and then we're also going to come out here. I'm going to pull this out. We're going to click on the object modifiers, add modifier, subdivision, surface. All right, so this is what happens. Like, what the hell is that doing? Well, if we increase the subdivisions and render, I'm going to put them both at three. I'm going to hit Control R, and that adds an edge loop. Kind of like up here, these are edge loops. So all you have to do is left click, and then it allows you to specify where you want it. So I'm just going to put it pretty close to the top and control R and do another one pretty close to the bottom. And then what we want to do is take the way you can select an edge and, or the, all the edges around, you hold the alt key and right click pretty simple so normally if you just right click you'd only select individual edges here but if you hold alt and right click you got all of it all right so now what I want to do is extrude it so the way you do that is hit E pretty simple and it has it basically on the Z axis that's the only way we can move it uh, so I'm just gonna put it up here and I'm gonna hit 5 on the number pad and that takes us from perspective mode to orthographic, which makes it a little bit easier to select edges when we need to. So I'm going to hit 1. That'll give us, on, on the number pad that is, that'll give us the front view. And I'm going to hit A to deselect it. And then I'm going to hit B. But first, come down here before you do that and click on this. Because if we went right now and just hit B and then selected all these edges, it would only select the ones that are visible from the front view. So if we hit A just to deselect and turn this on and hit B, which is basically, you know, a selection tool, it selects all of them, and that's what we want. So now what we want to do is hit the delete key, and we're going to put hit, uh, or delete, nope, not vertices, edges. All right, so now we got the, these two different, these two can separate pieces but they're still a part of the same object so I'm gonna hit I'm gonna go to one or on the number pad in front view B select it hit P 
on your keyboard and that allows you to separate selection. So click that. Now, if we go into tab mode, these are two different objects. All right, so this is gonna actually serve for our lid. All right, so with that selected, hit tab to go into edit mode. And I'm gonna go back to, uh, well, we're, we're, if you wanna go to the front mode, you can. Uh, I'm just gonna go like this, just slightly. And I'm going to select everything, all right, and then hit E to extrude. And I'm gonna extrude uh, right around here. This is the, basically the height that I want the uh, cap to be. And then hit Control R. Put one right down there, Control R, and one like right up here. All right. So far, so good. Um, I also kind of want to add like a little edge right here. So Control R, left click, maybe right around there, Control R right around there and then control R one in the middle and then hit S to scale that in just a little bit. All right, cool. All right, so now I also, let's go back, tab out, select this other one. We're going to tab into that and with, uh, yeah, we're in edge mode. Alt, right click, go to hit E and then just uh, click once, don't even move it, and then hit S to scale. We'll scale this in right around there, and then hit E, and hit the letter Z for Z, and that way it keeps it on that axis, and just come down around here. Uh, also, kind of forgot about this. We'll take this inner edge that we just uh, extruded. Oops, yeah, right there. And we're gonna extrude that too up on the Z axis axis right around there okay and then we are going to hit E again left click once hit S and then hit E and Z just down okay now what we want to do is create uh, an edge loop control R just click once left click and then we're gonna hit R for rotate well, first we're going to click and then hit R, so you click twice. So we're going to rotate like right around here, let go. And then we're going to hit Control R. And click twice and then Control R in the middle. And click twice and hit S to scale that out just a tad bit. That way it kind of creates like those, um, what do you call like the, where, the portion where it screws on basically. All right, so uh, now let me go just tab out, get out of edit mode. Um, we take this lid and we drag it down. It should be pretty good like that. So the reason I, I even bothered creating the portion that we can't see is because I'm going to duplicate the, the, uh, the containers. Man, they're being loud downstairs, my kids, anyhow. And uh, one of them's gonna have the lid off just to make it look interesting. All right, so. Okay, um, I, don't have, I don't like how this looks down here. It's kinda like you can see these ripples. Um, if we go to back to tab with this selected edit mode. And let me come down here. Kinda just hit Control R and create another edge loop. And that's looking better now. Okay, so we hit five on our pers for on our number pad for the perspective mode. This is pretty much what your protein container should look like, roughly. Okay, so I'm gonna real quickly get some things set up. Let's go over here. This is in the render panel. Um, we're gonna be using Cycles Render for this ultimately. So choose that, and. GPU compute makes everything run or load a lot faster. We're gonna to go to sampling. No, yeah, sampling. Samples, right now, if we were to render this, if we just change to render view down here, uh, things are usually real grainy, you can't tell because, uh, let me go over here to the world scene and make it white. Uh, let me also switch back to solid. We will hit, uh, Shift A, add plane, 
scale that thing large and then we'll go back to rendered okay now you see there's like kind of gray and grainy right here that's because of the sample so they're set really low initially so your preview which is what we're doing now in preview mode I uh, turn this up to like a hundred it makes it uh, a lot better looking and especially when you're ultimately rendering it as well all right so let me take solid here get back to orthographic by hitting five on the number pad hit one now we just move this up so that it's sitting on it pretty simple five again and we'll go to rendered okay and another thing that I want to do is work with this background or this this plane a little bit so I kind of want it to be like, well, I'm not even going to explain it. I'll just, <laughs> I'll just do it. So with it selected, we'll go to tab and then we're going to select, uh, yeah, we're in edge mode, right click this edge, hit E and then hit Z and then pull this thing up real high. All right. And then what I want to do is go into back to object mode. We'll add a subdivision surface. And it looks terrible. It's expected though. And then we will go back to this uh, to edit mode, I'm hitting tab, hit control R, add one right around there, control R up here, add one right around there, uh, control R again. And we will also go back to object mode, hit S for scale. And we'll scale on the x-axis like that. All right, there we go. Okay, so now, man, they are being loud down there. Let's go to rendered. All right. It's kind of hard to see because everything's so white. And if you wanted to adjust that, you just take this color down a little bit. But um, let's see here. Yeah, okay. Uh, I think that's going to be uh, where we're going to end for now. And tomorrow we should be able to wrap things up by adding uh, the actual label that we're going to do here in, in Photoshop and then setting up the material correctly to make sure it looks, you know, kind of like a protein container. Uh, it's type of material. Then we're going to also duplicate this a couple times and ultimately get something that should look pretty cool. All right, so check out designcourse.com if you haven't yet, and subscribe here on YouTube. All right, goodbye. <laughs>